Hey everyone, my name is Randy Lee and I'm an environmental engineer. So I've been working as an environmental engineer for about five years now and today I want to have a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation about something that's been on my mind lately that no one really discusses. I know as part of this channel, I should be encouraging you guys to join this field and that it's like up to us to change the trajectory of the future by making the world a better place and more sustainable. But you see, like being an environmental engineer isn't always like sunshine and rainbows. In fact, it could be quite lonely, challenging, and downright depressing sometimes. And as you can tell from the title of this video, I'll be talking about how entering this field could make you feel lonely, and I'll be talking about the challenges that you'll be encountering along the way. So be prepared, because it's about to get really ugly. And I want to be like absolutely honest and transparent with you about the ups and downs when you're going towards this journey. So let's dive into it. First, let's talk about loneliness. When you decide to pursue a career in environmental engineering, you might feel like a lone wolf. Friends and family may not always understand your passion or your choice. They might question why you're not going to a field that's like traditionally very lucrative and can make a lot of money. You might hear statements like, why not become a doctor or a lawyer? Trust me, I've been there. And it can feel very isolating at times when you're on a path that's less traveled. So here are a few things that they're probably gonna say to you. First one is, why not become a doctor or a lawyer? So this is a classic one. They might argue that these professions are not only more financially stable, but also more respected in society. I know they're genuinely concerned about your financial well-being and your future, which could lead to feelings of doubt about your chosen path. The next one is, are you sure you'll be making enough money? So many people equate success with a high income. When they see you entering a field like environmental engineering, which may not offer the same salary potential as some other lucrative careers, they might question your financial future. The third one is, but what exactly do you do? So environmental engineering isn't as well understood as professions like medicine or law. Your friends and family may struggle to grasp the specifics of your work, leading to a sense of isolation when you can't really share your daily experiences or achievements. Another one is, isn't that just about saving trees? So environmental engineering encompasses a wide range of issues from water quality and pollution control to renewable energy and sustainable infrastructure. Some people oversimplify it, thinking that it's solely about saving the environment without recognizing that it's much more broad. Another one is, you're just making your life more difficult. So pursuing a career in environmental engineering often involves navigating complex challenges and sometimes bureaucratic hurdles. Friends and family may worry about your chosen path because it's just gonna lead to more uncertainty and stress. Another one is, why not just work for a bigger company? So there's perception that working for a well-established corporation is the safe route, even if it involves activities that may be contributing to environmental problems in the first place. They might not understand your desire to work for a smaller organization or a nonprofit focused on sustainability. So again, it's your purpose, not so much your achievement or your stability. The last one is, are you sure it's worth it? So my question of whether the impact you'll make is worth the sacrifices and challenges that you'll make. They might not fully understand or appreciate the significance of your work because like, that's just not what they're interested in. You're interested in like, the long-term sustainability of the planet while well, they're just interested in like, you know, how to make more money. So overall, these comments often stem from a genuine concern and a lack of awareness about the significance of environmental engineering. It can be very frustrating, but it's also an opportunity to educate those around you about the importance of your chosen path and the broader benefits that it can offer to society and to the future generation of this planet. Another significant hurdle that you'll encounter a lot is skepticism. So there are a lot of people out there who still deny the reality of climate change. I mean, it's disheartening to hear that you'll still encounter these people who dismiss all your hard work and all those scientific facts and dedication and you know they still call it a hoax or a waste of time. But still remember that you know what you're doing and that your work is essential no matter what. So under this broad umbrella, you're gonna hear climate change deniers. One of the most significant challenges is facing these outright deniers. So some individuals or even significant influential figures still deny the scientific consensus of climate change. So for instance, you might encounter some people who just claim that extreme weather patterns are just part of the natural variability or that rising global temperatures are just a conspiracy. And it still sucks to hear that because there's so much overwhelming scientific evidence that support the reality of climate change. Another skeptical topic that you hear about is political opposition. 
Environmental engineers often work within a political framework and policies related to environmental protection and sustainability can be highly polarized. So for example, you might find yourself advocating for renewable energy projects in the face of opposition from politicians who prioritize fossil fuels. And this can be also, again, very frustrating and discouraging because science takes a backseat relative to like political ideologies. Another thing you'll encounter a lot is online trolls and harassment. So in the age of social media, environmental engineers may encounter online trolls and harassment. So for instance, if you post about a sustainable project or a climate change mitigation effort, you might receive some negative comments or even personal threats. Some individuals may even go to great lengths just to discredit your work or even like spread rumors or lies or even you know, misinformation. Next is resistance to sustainable practices. So in professional settings, you may face resistance to implementing sustainable practices. Again, for example, if you work in construction, you might suggest some like green building technologies, but colleagues or clients may push back due to concerns about increased costs or just unfamiliarity with these methods. Another one is economic interests. So climate change can challenge established economic interests such as fossil fuel industries. This often leads to well-funded campaigns aimed at sowing doubt about climate change. So for example, you might encounter sponsored studies or lobbying efforts designed to undermine renewable energy initiatives or even environmental regulations. Even so, despite these challenges, it's crucial for environmental engineers to stay committed to their work. Your expertise and dedication are vital in addressing the pressing environmental issues we face today. You know, we have to stay the course. And I know it sucks to hear the same things from the people that you care about and you love, but by continuing to educate, advocate, and innovate, you can bridge the gap between skepticism and meaningful action for a more sustainable future. And lastly, there's this need to be your own cheerleader. In this field, you'll face a lot of setbacks and obstacles that can sometimes make you question your own choice. There may be moments where you feel like giving up and then that's when you will need to find that inner strength, you know, that fire within you to keep pressing forward. You have to be your own biggest advocate and remind yourself, why did you choose this path? Was it because you wanted to help out the next generation of people even though you'll probably never meet any of them? You wanted to be that one unknown superhero that no one will ever talk about. And just to let you know, you're never gonna get famous for doing this. You'll never be known for what you've done and that's just how it is because you entered this field. Now, <laughs> I know this might all sound very discouraging, but that's not my intention. I just want you to know the reality so you can be prepared for this. In essence, being your own cheerleader in environmental engineering means having unwavering self-belief in your mission and your ability to keep your passion alive, even in the face of adversity. It's about maintaining resilience, staying focused on your goals, and reminding yourself that your work matters, not just for you, but for the planet, and for future generations. So my message for you today is this. If you're passionate about environmental engineering, don't be deterred by the challenges. Use them as fuel to propel yourself forward. Surround yourself with supportive peers and mentors who understand your journey. And remember that every small action counts in the fight for a more sustainable world. You'll be part of a community of like-minded individuals who work tirelessly to create a better future for the planet. You have the chance to make a real impact, even if it's gradual. And I know most people of you watching are scattered everywhere throughout the world, but you know, that's the cool thing about the internet and YouTube. I can't be there to help out your country, but you can. Not everyone's gonna listen to me at your home or in your neighborhood. No one cares about what I say in the US. Only you know your community more than I do. They'll listen to you. They know you, they don't know me. So be that one future environmental engineer to stand up for your community. And I know together we can make a difference. Just be prepared for the loneliness and the crazy challenges up ahead if you do decide to go into this field. And that's really all I can do to warn you. So that's all I have for this video. Hope you guys found at least some motivation to keep pushing forward as you go towards this route. Honestly, I'm saying this because I feel burnt out and I feel lonely as I'm traveling through this route. And you know, it's been like five years of loneliness. See you in the next video. Goodbye.